Hey guys, welcome to episode 5. Today we're going to be talking about the rehearsal process. So, we are moving towards the moment where we are ready to perform this monologue. So you've started to make choices, you're starting to get an idea of what they look like, what they sound like, what they are going through emotionally. Hopefully you're still playing around a bit and changing your mind. So for example, I've decided not to do the British accent. Uh, because as I was doing it, trying it out, I realized I was focusing too much on getting the accent right and not enough on what the character was feeling. But I've used some of the kind of British rhythms and stillness that I found with the accent and applied that to the monologue. Hopefully when I do it, you'll see what I mean. At some point, we need to start making specific choices and sticking to them. And once we've made those choices, it's then about getting the monologue into our bodies. You know, we no longer want to be worrying about, ooh, what's the next line? Or, ooh, how should I say that line? The monologue must start feeling like an old shoe. So, you need to get the words down. You need to get them out the way. If someone wakes you up in the middle of the night, you need to be able to recite halfway through, go. And the reason for that is we don't want to see you remembering lines or reciting words to us. We want you to take us on a journey and the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you know exactly where you're going in terms of words, emotional beats. How do you learn lines? Personally, I like to write the monologue out. There's something about, you know, writing with a pen to paper that kind of gets the words into my head. Keep reading it, but be careful of getting stuck in your rhythmic choices. So what that means is, you know, after a while, the monologue stops sounding fresh and you find you start talking in patterns and everything starts to sound the same. Yeah, shake it loose, shake it loose. If you have the time, like take the whole day off and don't look at the monologue or say it once. Leave it alone, do something completely different. Watch a movie, read a book. We don't want it to become stale. And maybe when you come back to it, you find new things. So you've made your choices, but as you try to get the words into you, you know, Try the monologue in a different accent. Try sing the monologue. You know, try, try the monologue in a robotic voice. So there's no inflections, there's no rhythm. Everything is just like this. At lunch, we don't say anything to anyone. You know, see if you can do the monologue extremely fast from start to finish. To be specific, I'm in the middle of basting a chicken that I'm in the middle of roasting and at the core of the recipe there's a lot of butter so you have to keep basting the bird otherwise all that's gonna happen is the butter's gonna burn. Do the monologue as you're washing your dishes, you know, you're just doing something else, just letting the words come out as you're cleaning your room. Because when you perform it, you don't wanna be thinking, ooh, what's my next line? Because that's immediately gonna take you out of it. You wanna know what your next line is and you just wanna be sitting in the emotion and sitting in the moment. And very important to performance is this idea of spontaneity and surprise. All that means is that, you know, you've made your choices, fine, so you have a map or music or a shape to it, but there's gonna be variations within that and they're gonna come in the moment. And if you're really sitting in it, maybe a line comes out differently and that's fine, that's great, you want that, you want it to be fresh. But those moments of spontaneity and surprise aren't gonna happen if you're thinking about what's gonna be coming next because then you won't be in the moment. I'd suggest getting a friend, you know, someone who you really trust, who you can perform the monologue to. A nice exercise is if you stand opposite your friend and you literally feed them one line at a time. And they only let you go to the next line if they believe you. So you say your first line and then they respond either with I believe you or I don't believe you. If they believe you, you give them the next line. There comes a point where you've done all the work. You've made your choices and you've mapped out your emotional journey and you know the lines off by heart, you know, you're not struggling to remember anything. Now what you need to do is trust that the work's sitting within you, it's underneath it all, and forget about it. It will be there. Your beats will be there. You've worked them out. Stop thinking about where you're going to next and what you're feeling in the moment. Just be in the moment. Let the monologue happen to you. All the different colors are there. You don't need to show us them anymore. They're there. Just speak the lines. Speak the lines as the character. Because then what happens is you open up space for anything to happen. And you can be surprised by where it goes. And we can be surprised. We want to watch you as the character navigating the monologue for the first time. So think about what you're saying as you say it and let it come out as it will. Don't push it. Don't force it. Relax. Just speak it. As soon as you get this idea of performing in your head, you feel like you need to do more. And often it's just about doing enough and letting the audience use their imagination as well. But ultimately, you don't want to feel like you are performing a monologue. Oh, lots of pressure. You want to feel like you are this character and you're just talking to us and communicating what you have to say. I would really suggest looking at Andrew Scott on YouTube. 
and you watch watch how he does Shakespeare Hamlet he makes it so natural and so human and it seems so fresh he also does a monologue uh, by Simon Stevens called Seawall I hope it's still on YouTube you know it's a 30 minute monologue but it literally feels like he's just talking to us and he's not performing he's just speaking you know and he's clearly marked out beats and shifts for himself but it also doesn't feel like he's working it and he's showing us oh look at my nice beats and he's being surprised by the monologue as it happens to him so check it out if you can okay guys so next time which is the last kind of uh, tutorial episode i will be explaining how to film yourself you know what kind of lighting to use um, how to set the phone up and all that and then after that it's time for performance uh, but i will see you next time first cheers <laughs>